He has these fish are racing up the water column there. My jig's right there, somewhere in the <laughs> There's just so many fish down there, it's hard to see the jig. In the previous video, we went over the installation and basic settings of the Garmin EchoMap 93SV UHD2. In this video, we're going to cover 2D sonar, how it works, and best settings. So first, let's start with how 2D sonar works. This signal gets sent from the transducer to the lake bottom and returns back to the transducer. If there's anything between the transducer and the lake bottom, that's going to show up as a fish, weeds, brush, whatever. That's because that signal gets sent from the transducer, it hits the fish, it hits the weeds, it hits the brush pile, and it gets returned instead of going all the way down to the lake bottom. Now the size of the cone is determined by the frequency. On a lot of older 2D sonar units, there were typically two frequencies, 200 kilohertz and 83 kilohertz. The 200 kilohertz frequency was a smaller cone showing roughly one third of the width of the bottom. That means let's say we're in 21 feet of water, it's showing seven feet in diameter on the lake bottom. On contrast, the 83 kilohertz frequency was a much wider cone angle showing a one to one ratio. So in the same 21 feet of water, we were actually seeing 21 feet in diameter of the lake bottom. Newer 2D sonar units use something called CHIRP, which sends out multiple frequencies at the same time, giving you a very clear, crisp image. Many of these modern 2D sonar units will actually show the distance of the cone angle, as you can see here on the Garmin unit. You can slide up changing frequencies or changing the cone angle, and it will automatically calculate it for you what the bottom of the cone angle is showing you. Now keep in mind that the cone angle at the very, very top towards the transducer is much narrower than the lake bottom. So if we go back to our example of using 200 kilohertz in 21 feet of water, that's showing us seven feet across on the lake bottom. But if we go up just three feet to 18 feet down in the same 20 feet, 21 feet of water, it's only showing us six feet across in diameter. So understand as you get closer towards the transducer, the cone angle is narrower and it's not gonna show as much data versus near the lake bottom, it's gonna show a wider cone angle. It's gonna be much wider and show more data. So now that we've covered how 2D sonar works, let's talk about reading the screen. Most modern day electronics use multiple color palettes rather than the old grayscale style. The color allows you to interpret the size and density of the object or the actual lake bottom itself, whether the lake bottom is made of sand, gravel, muck, mud. This color scale that you're seeing here uses a dark red as a hard return, meaning a hard lake bottom, brush, rocks, even big fish will appear as red. Now the blues and the greens are actually showing the weakest return. Typically smaller schools of bait fish will show up as blues or green. But if you go into the color palette selection on the Garmin unit, there's a variety of different palettes that you can use. The typical hummingbird palette, as you can see here, is more of a yellow return, meaning the yellow is actually the hardest image that you're looking at, so the bigger fish are gonna show up as yellow. It depends on what you're comfortable seeing. Pick a palette scale that you're comfortable with, get used to understanding what a rock pile or sand looks like versus mud, muck, or silt, and what big fish versus little fish look like based on that color palette. Time on the water is the only way you're gonna get comfortable with this. Now let's talk about what you're actually seeing on the screen and how the screen relates to the transducer. On the top right part of the screen, the very top right corner, that is where your transducer would be located in relation to your boat. So anything directly under the top right corner of the screen is directly under the transducer. So let's say you have the transducer mounted at the transom Anything showing directly under the top right corner of that screen is directly under the transom of your boat. As the image moves left across the screen, those images are now further behind your transducer. This is historical data. So now that we've explained how 2D sonar works and kind of what you're seeing on the screen, let's explain some of the options that are on this 2D sonar screen itself. First, let's just start with the power button. Top right corner, if you push it one time, it's gonna bring up a menu. This is an easy way to adjust your backlight. Uh, you manually move it up and down, brighten the screen. You can set it on auto, and that will automatically dim it or brighten it depending on the, the lighting that you're in. We're gonna leave it a little bit hotter here. 
And the other thing you can do is turn this color mode on. Again, you can set it for daytime or nighttime colors. Typically, I just leave it on auto. That way, Garmin, the, actually the Garmin units themselves are very smart. They know when sunset and sunrise is given the day, and it'll auto adjust once it gets to that time of day. Right below the power button are the plus and minus options. These are how you adjust the depth of your 2D sonar screen. So by pushing the minus, you're actually gonna shrink or go down in depth. So as you can see, it goes down by five foot increments. If I go to the plus button, it's gonna go up in depth, going from 25 to 30, 35, 30 to 35, and then now to 40 foot. Another way to adjust your depth on the top of the screen, you have the same plus and minus buttons. You can hit them to adjust it by five feet. Otherwise, if you tap the center of it, it'll adjust it to this auto function. And then you can tap it again to do the manual adjustments. So with on-screen settings, you're gonna simply hit this three buttons on the bottom right corner. Below the plus and minus keys on the right side of the screen, you'll see uh, quick set keys, which are one, two, three, and four. Um, you can set these by just simply holding them down on the screen that you're currently on. So I hold down the number one key, this message will pop up. It says page saved to shortcut key number one. You can hit OK. So now if I'm in a different screen, let's say I'm in side view, and I want to jump back to 2D sonar, I'm just going to press this number one key, and it'll jump back into my 2D sonar. So this is the menu that will pop up when you hit your three buttons. And let's actually start with the range function, because we've already covered how to adjust settings with our plus minus manual keys on the right side of the screen, and then our plus minus keys at the top of the screen. So this is how you would also manually adjust your depth up or down by one foot increments, or you can select auto, or you can just hold your finger on the slider system and actually just manually slide it up and down. The main reason you want to uh, shrink your screen is because of the pixels that it's gonna designate to a square uh, inch or area of water. Let me explain something. Let's say this is your, uh, this is your crappie for whatever reason shaped like this. When the transducer sends a signal down, it's going to hit part of that fish. And the slower you go over it, the more it's going to ping off this fish, which is why you see all these elongated lines as I'm not really moving that fast. If you were to go two miles an hour, it might only hit this fish three or four times. That's why you see these sharp arcs, because normally a fish is more shaped like this. So it's going to ping off the tail of it, the middle and the head, and it's going to give you this arc shape. So now back into the settings menu on the 2D sonar screen itself, we're gonna start from the top. This says your gain. This is your sensitivity of the unit. Um, you can see I have mine set at auto medium. Typically auto medium or auto low are good settings to give you a crisp clear image for 2D sonar. You really don't have to tweak it too much unless you're in some sort of current system where there's a lot of sediment moving around. You might have to adjust your settings that way, but. Auto low or auto medium are good functions to leave them at. Typically with your frequency, you just want to set it to chirp. Now in order to manually set a frequency, you have to manually type it in. So on these newer units, you can manually set a very specific frequency. By doing so, you just click the manage frequencies, click the new preset, and then you manually type in whatever frequency you want between this frequency range right here, which says 140 to 240. So let's say we just want 140. I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm click done. And now a new preset pops up. I'm gonna click back and as you can see in my drop down menu, my 140 is now able to be selected. But most of you just wanna leave it at chirp. It's gonna give you the clearest image possible. So next we have our beam width. Now we can adjust the cone angle of our beam here simply by using the slider going up and down and it'll see you'll adjust your frequency as well. Or you can manually click the up and down and it'll adjust it for you. Or you can select chirp, which I highly recommend. It's gonna give you the cleanest picture possible by selecting chirp. All right, so now let's talk about the next feature here, which is zoom. So when I select zoom, it's gonna zoom in to a certain preset of feet from either the top or the bottom of the screen. And here's how we set that. There's three buttons next to the zoom menu option. So we're gonna click that. And we're gonna click 
Right now it's in manual mode. We're going to click set zoom. And so what you see here, there's two options to adjust this. I can move my zoom function up or down the water column. So as you can see, there's two lines right here and right here. I can move that up and down the water column. But you'll see that it says 13 feet. Right now it's showing me 13 feet worth of zoom. So right now it's about from 13 feet to 25 feet of water. And I can continue to slide this up and down. Now if I want to change my zoom function, I can zoom in. See how my, my zoom window is now getting narrower and narrower. Or I can zoom out. So let's say I want to zoom into the bottom 10 feet of the water column. Maybe I'm fishing for bass or walleye or something. And I can see the zoom picture on the left side of the screen and the full water column on the right side of the screen. Another way to do this, you can click on your mode and I can set it to auto. And it's going to set an auto to scan to the bottom 10 feet. And the way to turn this off, you just simply click your zoom function one time and it resets it to the regular 2D screen. So with our sonar setup option, when we go into that, it's going to give us a list of other options. First is our scroll speed. Now the scroll speed is simply the speed at which data is populated from the right to the left side of the screen. So if I scroll this all the way down to, to number one, you'll see that the data moving from right to left across the screen is very, very slow. If I move this all the way to number 10, you can see all of a sudden this data is populating very fast. Typically, you just leave it right at the default setting. That's going to give you a very clear image. You can play around with it to see if something gives you a little bit better image. I got some other videos on the YouTube channel kind of explaining this. This is one of those settings I would leave as a factory default. The next is the noise reject. The only time you'd want to turn up your interference is when you're fishing with a large group of people around you. Um, let's say in the winter time if you're fishing bridges for crappie, there might be a lot of boats in your area. Or if you're ice fishing, this is one of those things you need to turn up to medium or high to potentially limit the amount of interference that is happening from other transducers in the area. So we're going to leave that on low. So now that we talked about interference, let's talk about color limit. Color limit adjusts the intensity of colors and highlights areas of interest on the screen itself. So right now I got it all the way down. Okay, and you can see there's a lot of separation between some fish on the bottom here. So this solid red line going from left to right or right to left as it's moving across the screen, that's the lake bottom. And these arcs, these are either fish or brush piles or weeds or something. And you can see there's some separation between that hard line on the bottom and these fish. When I crank this up, you're gonna notice that the screen got really bright. But what happened was the separation of either smaller fish kind of disappeared. See all these little blue arcs here? These might be all small bait fish. And then there's some bigger fish mixed in, probably chasing the bait fish around. If you crank this all the way up, you're gonna lose sight of all that. By cranking this up, it increases the intensity and you can see it only highlights those larger fish that you might be targeting, depending on what kind of species you're chasing after. Now, I typically chase after crappie, so I'm gonna leave this on low because a lot of my crappie are probably gonna look something like these smaller arcs right here, maybe not that real big one on the top, but they're probably gonna look something like that, maybe something like this right here. So I'm gonna leave that on low. The next option is smoothing. Now, smoothing removes noise that is not part of the standard sonar return, and it adjusts the appearance of returns such as the bottom. So use smoothing and interference together to filter out low level noise on the image. This is another way to kind of adjust uh, any interference that you might see. So if I turn this on high, what you might see, because there's not a ton of interference on this screen right now, it's kind of hard to, to pick it out, but I'm looking more towards, is this giving me better separation on the bottom from possible fish on the bottom? If I turn it off, right now this screen doesn't have a ton of interference, so it's a little bit harder to pick out. But if you're having trouble seeing separation from the bottom, you're getting some interference, I would highly recommend using that smoothing function along with your interference function to see if you can get a better image that way. Um, surface noise. You can see at the very top right here, there's kind of a red line. When I turned it off, it's gonna just take it away. Now it's completely white at the, at the very top. 
typically I will leave this off. There's not really much you can gain from having that surface noise on. So let's talk about the last uh, setting option, which is TVG. TVG adjusts the appearance of returns to compensate for the weak sonar signals in deeper water. Increasing the setting and the colors associated with the low level noise will make fish targets appear more consistent throughout various water depths. Typically with TVG, you'll see it talked about with using the Garmin LiveScope because it's a great way to adjust to see fish in a little bit deeper water. With 2D sonar, you probably, I think off or low, would probably be a good function to leave it on. If you're fishing in really deep water, let's say 50, 60, 100 foot deep, you might need to turn it on to medium or high to really see uh, any fish targets that you're trying to focus on in that extreme depth. But using off or low is probably a good setting for most of you. So now if we go back into our sonar setup and we go to the next one, which is our appearance menu, you can see a bunch of options come up. The first one is your color scheme. Now this is actually going to uh, select which kind of color palette that you want. Typically the most people use is this maroon pattern that it's on right now. It's a white background. Anything that is a large object or a hard return is going to show up as this maroon. You can see these are bigger arcs, bigger marks because they have that maroon in them. Any smaller fish are going to show up as this kind of yellow or blue. Um, but you can change the color scheme to select whatever you want. This is another standard Garmin screen, usually with that blue background. Um, for those of you guys that are switching from a different manufacturer to Garmin, this might look like a familiar screen for you on 2D sonar. But you can go through them. There's a bunch of different options. I typically use the maroon option. For me, this gives the best image, in my opinion, and I can see exactly what I want to see. Next, we can go down to our color gain. Again, this is same as the color gain function uh, in the other options that we looked at. You can see as I'm adjusting it down, it really separates out um, any hard returns from soft returns as I crank it down, as I move it all the way up to the very top. It basically tells me that the entire screen is running really hot with its sonar and it's hard to see any separation. So you can play with this if you're trying to get a little bit better separation from, let's say, a brush pile to fish uh, with 2D sonar, or maybe fish are sitting on the bottom and you're trying to see them a little bit better, you can play with the color gain to get better separation. Now the A-scope, this is probably one of my favorite tools when you're trying to actually see your jigs underneath your transducer using 2D sonar. So if I turn this off, you'll see the screen at the, on the right side that little A-scope function, this is the amplitude meter, Garmin calls it the A-scope, it uh, disappears and then comes back. This is real-time sonar, so when you drop your jigs down, you're going to see them drop down in, in virtually real-time, and you'll actually see them move, let's do that, you'll actually see the historical data move from right to left across the screen. So you can see how these kind of arcs are formed. Here's one coming up, there's a fish right here. And you can see how the A-scope function actually forms that arc on the screen. And we'll do a separate video how to use this A-scope specifically for vertical jigging uh, for some crappie. All right, so the next function here is depth line, which is a quick reference guide to the depth line. And now you can manually touch the screen and we, you can select where that depth line is. So let's say you start seeing a bunch of fish like this and you want to know exactly what depth they're at. Okay, that's 13 feet, it looks like the bottom of that school. And you simply just by touching anywhere on the 2D sonar screen, that's where it's going to adjust. The next function is the edge function. Um, this highlights the strongest signal from the bottom to help identify its hardness or softness. Um, this is a great way to find those structural transitions from let's say a sand or gravel bottom to a, a mud, muck, or silty bottom. So. Coming up this fall, I highly recommend use this function if you're fishing a lot of our natural lakes, specifically in the northern region of the U.S. This function is probably going to be very useful to finding that structure edge, that structure transition. So the next and probably one of the most talked about settings with 2D sonar is your fish symbols, your fish ID. Um, this allows users to target, to basically tell the unit if there are fish, let's say this group of fish right here, 
there are fish there, just give me some sort of symbol that relates to where those fish are and, and how deep they are. The problem with this is you're forcing the unit themselves, even though this unit is very smart, you're forcing the unit to interpret things that maybe you interpreted differently because you've spent time on the water and spent time with 2D sonar. So typically I don't use this, but if you, um, you really feel like this is gonna benefit you, you can play around with using fish symbols. Um, you can see there's four different functions here. So there's the fish with the little arcs. That's actually gonna show both the 2D screen with the fish. Um, right now I got the fish symbol selected with the arcs and the number. So it's gonna show me the actual depth of that fish mark. Then there's just the fish, which is actually gonna take away all the little arcs on the screen. And then there's the fish with the numbers without any arcs on the screen. So I typically am just gonna leave that off, but you can play around with it um, to suit your needs. The next option here is our overlay data. And as you can see, I have everything turned on. It's showing on the top left corner of the screen. So it's, right now I got depth, water temp, unit voltage, and my speed, as well as my time of day. And to simply adjust it or to turn things off, you just click it to the hide function and you can see my data is deleting. And then turn it back on. I'm just gonna click on show and it will show the data. Appearance and now let's get into fish alarms, or I guess any type of alarms. You got your shallow water alarm. So if you're cruising along and you wanna make sure you're in at least two feet of water, you can set this shallow water alarm to two foot, turn it on, set your depth, and anytime it's less than two foot of water, this unit will beep at you. Maybe you're concerned about hitting a rock or a stump. Um, your deep water alarm, kind of the same thing. You can set that alarm so that once you get over a certain depth of water, you can have the unit beep at you. Maybe you're looking for pieces of cover in a certain depth of water. Um, your front view alarm. Uh, the alarm sounds when the depth in the front of the boat is less than a specified value. So this is a great way when you have it hooked up to your live scope transducer and you're trying to view in front of the boat and you're trying to avoid maybe hitting some sort of shallow object, um, you can set your depth to you know whatever you need, two, three feet of water for a draft, and be sure not to run into anything using that alarm system. Water temp alarm, again, you're just setting your limits to say, if the water temp reaches a certain amount, let me know. So your contour alarm uh, will actually show when a target suspended within the specified depth that you set if I turn this on, you can see there's a depth range. It's gonna give me an alarm when any target shows up within this depth. Again, this is probably much more of a deep water application, not so much a freshwater application. You can turn your fish ID alarm on. Again, I don't typically recommend using fish ID, but you can turn it on and this unit will beep at you when it interprets that there are fish below the boat. Again, the key thing there is the unit is interpreting data, not you seeing the screen. So I'd recommend just leaving that off and learning how to interpret the data. The last option here is installation, just a function to restore your sonar defaults back to its factory settings if for whatever reason you feel like you need to do that. And the last sonar function is this edit overlays. Um, data, you can have data show up on the side of the screen here. You notice I clicked on sidebar and now all my GPS speed, um, my heading, water temp, depth, time of day, and my GPS location are showing on the right side of the screen. And you can adjust it to you know the top of the screen. Typically I just leave this off because I don't really need to see it. Um, your navigation, I'm just gonna leave this on auto. You can also adjust your top bar of your screen. Um, Typically, the only time I would use the top bars if I'm trying to connect to my Garmin Force trolling motor and where you can actually use the touchscreen itself to control the trolling motor. But there's also a bunch of options here to connect to maybe a power pole anchor, um, your, mercury your mercury motor, you know, if you want to connect to your engine. Um, maybe you have some sort of sound system built into the boat. You can connect to that via Wi-Fi through the unit or you can plug it in through an ethernet cable.
So that's going to wrap it up for 2D sonar settings and how 2D sonar works. In the next video, we're going to be talking about Clearview, which is Garmin's version of Downview.